everyone. Welcome back to episode 116 of the Talk of Fame podcast with your host, Kylie Montigny. I'm so excited to have on host of Classy Tricks podcast and pro-life activist, Savannah Duzik. Thank you so much. Come on, Savannah. Thank you so much for having me. I'm very excited to be on and to hear a little bit more about what you do and then to tell you what I do with my own podcast. Of course. So how did you get involved in the pro-life movement, basically? Yes. So that's that's typically the question that most people start with is how did you get involved or how do you get involved in the pro-life movement? And my answer to that question is there's not one way that you can get involved. And there's not necessarily even one way that I got involved, but I, I grew up in the pro-life movement. So my parents were very, very pro-life. They did things with our church. My mom did crisis pregnancy counseling with aid for women. My dad led the respect life group at our church. Um, so I grew up in that culture, in a, in a culture of life, in a culture that was respecting life in my family. I have five younger brothers. We had a big family and it was honestly a, a true blessing to be raised that way. Mm-hmm. But then I got into high school and college and I just kind of was like, oh, I, I want to be, I want to be a teacher, right? I want to teach kids because I love kids and I wanted to work with kids and I like talking to people. I like teaching. And so I was like, well, I'll be an elementary school teacher. So I was in college. I was going to my community college for this. And I was also doing running some pro-life groups in my college because I'd kind of done that my whole life, just running different little pro-life groups. Mm -hmm. Well, in college, I saw that there was just such a need. There was such a need for these pro-life groups. There was such a lack of knowledge from people my age of what abortion was, what abortion does, what contraception is, what that has to do with abortion, all the links, all the little ties. There was such a, there were so many misconceptions and so many falsehoods being spread. And I thought to myself, well, I do want to teach, but I think I want to teach something very specific. I think I want to teach people about the pro-life movement and about the greatest human rights crisis of our times. So at that time, that was about four or five years ago, it was kind of not really as known that that you could have a career in the pro-life movement. Mm -hmm. There were not very many people who did. And so I wasn't really sure where to start, but I went to basically any pro-life event that I could find around me. I searched on Facebook, pro-life events near me. I searched on Google. I went to every event that I could go to. And at one of these events, there was a woman in her twenties, um, super passionately speaking about the pro-life movement. And I was like, wow, that's very, that's very encouraging and very incredible to me. And I'd love to do something similar to that. So I went up to her afterwards and it turns out she's the executive director of Illinois right to life. And she said that they were hiring for internships over the summer. So I got an internship with Illinois right to life. And from there, it kind of just all spiraled and um I got involved in other different organizations I kind of am narrowing down exactly what I want to do my niche and who I want to reach out to so yeah I'm sure we'll talk a little bit later about how you can get involved in the pro-life movement but that's kind of my story Mm -hmm. like how like like what the pro-life movement like it wasn't such I like a big thing until probably like 2020 2021 pro-life and pro-choice like that wasn't like a really it was a thing, but it wasn't like as big as like the last like two or three years. Like how has like the government make it like especially with Roe v. Wade being overturned and stuff like that? Like it has made like so much change with the world around us, especially in the U.S. Like how has like the overturn of Roe v. Wade changed the way for women to have abortions or to get pregnant? Right. So the thing is. For the past over 50 years, abortion has been legal and the states have not been able to um, restrict abortion, right? Mm -hmm. And so really for the past 50 years, abortion has been an enormous issue, but it came to the forefront only in 2020, 2021, because that's when the Supreme Court decided to revisit this case. They decided Mm -hmm. to take up, um, well, they decided to take up a new case that could potentially overturn Roe v. Wade. So when that happened, everyone started realizing, whoa, well, maybe Roe v. Wade isn't like guaranteed, right? The pro-choice side started to realize, okay, um, well, first of all, Roe v. Wade, the, the ground that it stood on was flawed at the beginning. And so 
they could, they could overturn it. And what are we going to do about that? And so the pro-choice side started getting louder and meaner. And we start the pro-life side starting, started to speak the truth more with more boldness, because we know that what we're talking about is consistent. We've been saying the same things for the past 50 years, the human rights, the human life needs to be respected. Human life has value and innocent human life cannot be killed. That's the mm-hmm. cold blooded murder. So we started talking and, and speaking out more about this. And when Roe v. Wade was overturned in June, I think that it was kind of a wake up call for all of us that mm-hmm. Roe versus Wade is overturned. This is an enormous victory in the pro-life movement, but really our fight has just begun because now that Roe versus Wade is overturned, the issue of abortion is back with the states, right? So now each individual state gets to decide if they will have abortion legal or not. And the states that do decide to keep abortion legal, those are going to be states where women are going to flock to get abortion. And the states that ban abortion, those are going to be states where we need to boost our crisis pregnancy centers. We need to boost our resources for women in crisis pregnancies. And we really need to do that all around the United States. You know, one of the most important things we can do um, in this post row America, I really believe, is to support crisis pregnancy centers and to support people who are helping women in crisis pregnancies. Mm-hmm. Like, like, do you think like there was like a smack, like a big change, like in like crisis pregnancy since like the Roe v. Wade overturned? Because obviously, with like the government leading to the states to figure out like what if they should keep it illegal or like whatever to keep it to the states like and like with some states they banned it but some states they didn't like how do you think like with Roe v. Wade and some states leading up to like whether to ban it or not like how do you think like women's like pregnancies change whether to keep it abortion or not so that you know you're you're asking if I think there are more crisis pregnancies yeah well, yes, there are, because there have been an estimated 10,000 lives saved since Roe v. Wade. So there have been, um, that's, that's a crazy number, and, and this is an estimation of 10,000 lives saved. So yes, the thing is, yes, there have been more crisis pregnancies, right? Yes, there have been more women who are not allowed to kill their child inside of the womb, right? Mm-hmm. Because but the, the the thing of it is no woman should have the right to kill their child inside or outside of the womb. Mm-hmm. So just because there have been more crisis pregnancies, that's not a bad thing, right? That's mm-hmm. we're, we're saving lives. That's a great thing. Mm-hmm. Now, have there been enough resources for these women who are in crisis pregnancies? Probably not. But have there been resources? Yes, there have been. There have been huge, wonderful organizations such as Let Them Live who've stepped up and who help women in crisis pregnancies with anything they need from rent to groceries to crisis pregnancy counseling, all sorts of things. So I know that we are not able to, well, I know that we're not perfect, obviously. No one in the pro-life movement is perfect. The pro-life movement is not perfect, but we are continuously doing all we can to help these women in crisis pregnancies. And to be honest with you, All these horror stories that we were told we were going to be hearing after Roe v. Wade of like women dying from pregnancies, like all this stuff, we haven't really heard those. Mm -hmm. So I would I would venture to say that um, women are needing to step up and own the fact that they are pregnant and that there is another human being inside of them. And then um, go from there, you know, and get the help they need, uh, get the resources they need. And we're there for them at that stop. Mm-hmm. And so, like, I want to talk with you, like, you are a marketing intern for a live action. Like, can you tell us kind of more about the organization, the mission, what, like, the, like, what does live action will help to change? Yes. So live action, if you are at all involved in the pro-life movement, you likely know who live action is. Live action was started by Lila Rose, who is a huge pro-life advocate when she was only 15 years old. And she was just a regular girl who saw a need, who saw a human rights crisis and thought, you know what, I'm going to spend my life fighting against this crisis. She wrote this um, amazing book called Fighting for Life, which I recommend that everyone reads. I normally have it on my desk, but I think I have a friend borrowing it right now, so I don't. Um, But it's called Fighting for Life by Lila Rose, and it really explains 
her life and then the mission of live action. And now live action has turned into the largest global digiting, digital um, media source for all things human rights, you know, for the pro-life movement and for the, the global human rights movement. So um, at live action, we want we want to spread a culture of life in a truthful way with using facts and using just the most comprehensive basic training that we can to to show people that human life is beautiful and human rights are beautiful and we deserve all of these and every single person in the world deserves human rights Mm -hmm, exactly and like that's what like really the united states is really about is human rights obviously when the united states is one of the most powerful maybe the most powerful country in the world and like with the um some issues that are going on currently it just seems like oh god like are we still the most powerful country in the world with some issues going on over the last couple of months or the last like, year or two and like with the Roe v. Wade overturned like how can like the government make a world a better place for women that are middle of a pregnancy but they're like having a hard time like with their pre- like pregnancy yeah, so I don't think there's there's not one answer to how the how the government can I get I guess my answer to that would be that we need to start with the government ensuring human rights. I guess that would be my answer because right now we don't right now innocent lives are allowed to be killed in America. Like that the at the baseline that is flawed. And so if we try to do anything um on top of that, it's going to collapse because our our uh, surface, our baseline is flawed right now. There's not human rights for everyone. Everyone doesn't have human rights. So I think whenever people ask me, you know, like, what, what more can the government do to, like, the government? What more can the government do to help women? What more can the government do to prevent crisis pregnancy? Like, well, first of all, we need to go back to the fact that right now the government doesn't even protect the right to life. So we need to protect the right to life. And then we can go on to, you know, helping women have more maternity leave, helping possibly getting paternity leave, you know, more um, access to help for mothers. Of course, that's a wonderful thing. Mm -hmm. And like uh, with abortion, going back to kind of like abortion, like of course, like with the Roe v. Wade, people like some states are having like ending abortion, like with some states. How can people, like, end abortion, not just in the United States, but it's around the world itself? Yeah, so I love this question because, you know, I talk to a lot of people who work in the pro-life movement, and sometimes we get, like, just bogged down. Like, how do I end abortion, right? Mm -hmm. There are so many abortions. There are over 2,000 abortions that occur every single day in America alone. Like, how the heck are we supposed Mm -hmm. to end that? There's over 73 million abortions that occur in the world. Well, the fact of it is we're not going to end abortion in one night. You know, we're not going to end abortion large scale by ourselves. We're all going to have to work together. And what we do is we need to work on spreading a culture of life. So that is one of the things that I love to talk about is spreading a culture of life in full, right? So not just no abortion, right? It's about living your life in a healthy way, Um preaching, protecting and promoting chastity so that you don't get yourself into crisis pregnancies, you know, dressing modestly so that you show the beauty of your body and not the, and not something that only your husband should see, you know, there's just a whole, there's a whole world of elements that it's not just abortion. It's all these other things that are going to come together and hopefully create a culture of life in the world Mm -hmm. to end abortion that way. Mm -hmm. And like, Oh, like over the last year, I'm like switching over to your podcast now. And like you started a podcast called Classy Chicks. Like what like yes. was your like intention in starting Classy Chicks? So my goal for Classy Chicks and my intention in starting it was when I was in high school and college, I didn't really have a um a woman in her, you know, in, in their 20s who is living a healthy Christian life who I could look up to who was, who was single and not married. You know, there's, there's a bunch of young mothers who start podcasts. I love those. I love listening to those, but there wasn't like a woman who was not, you know, just getting drunk every night, going to, um, having one night stands, all this stuff who I could 
look up to. And so I kind of wanted to, to be that, you know, I wanted to, to start this podcast and to have other women be that as well, to have other women come on and show women in high school and college that, Hey, there's a different way to live. You know, there's a way where we can live and have a culture of life. Um, and have a beautiful, fun, adventurous life. Like I've had some really cool guests on um, from this woman who started her own Christian makeup company to a co-founder of a uh, pro-life fashion company. You know, there's been some amazing people on the Classy Chicks podcast that I hope will encourage younger girls. Mm -hmm. And like, what is like, like you have like a favorite like guest or episode that you filmed? That's a hard one. So I sent out an email at the end of this year of like my top favorite classy tricks episodes of this year but I don't know that I can pick one favorite I mean let me real quickly go back I know that I'm pretty sure the most listened to was one it was one of the like mid it was middle of last year I believe it was oh purity versus chastity and in this in this podcast episode we talked about um do we want to strive for purity versus chastity? And is there such thing as a toxic purity culture? And what does chastity actually mean? So I know you might have some questions on that. And if you are interested, go listen to it. It's actually, it's episode number four, purity versus chastity. I also loved, I mean, I've, I've had so many great guests on. I loved the episode we did in the beginning or no, the beginning of May, Roe v. Wade, the countdown is on because we knew that Roe was going to be overturned. And so we Mm -hmm. were just so excited about that. Um, I liked the episode number 17, which is called, what does it mean to influence? So we talked about like influencers that we follow and what it actually means to have influence in our world. And if we actually want that. Mm -hmm. Um, And then I loved episode number, I think 33. Uh, which is pro-life styles, dating, modesty, and more. And I liked this one because we I did it with Mallory from Those Other Girls podcast, who's just this awesome, vibrant young woman who discusses all things being a single woman in your 20s. So those are some of my favorites. I mean, I don't know. I I love all the guests that I have on and I almost always have a guest on. So um, mm-hmm. go listen to the Classy Chicks podcast. And then if you have any suggestions for guests, Definitely DM me on Instagram. It's at Classy Chicks Pod. And yeah. Yeah, like it's amazing. Like with like 2023, obviously it's a new year and it feels like you literally just started. And like with the new year, like what are your plans for 2023? Like, is there anything specific you like are planning to do? Yeah. So, I mean, there is some confidential stuff in the works. I have a whole list of goals for 2023, but I really just want to, um, narrow in on the niche of a whole culture of life right Mm -hmm. of working to end abortion the greatest human rights crisis but reaching out to young girls and saying hey we need to be in this fight together because we are the demographic who Planned Parenthood is targeting and so we need to be the strongest and the loudest and we need to spread our voices in all of our unique ways so I really want to do do more with my classy chicks podcast I write for culture of life fashion so I'm going to continue to do that be more involved in culture of life fashion live action I'm so incredibly excited to continue to work with them and then obviously I have my website, my blog, and my newsletter um, that you can maybe link in the show notes. So there's there's a lot of really good things coming. I hope to see a lot of people who are listening at the March for Life in just a few weeks. Yeah, where is the March for Life at? So the National March for Life is in Washington, D.C. And I can get you the date in one second because I'm not sure. I'm going to be there the whole week of January 17th, but the March for Life is on January 20th. Mm-hmm. That's amazing. I definitely have to check that thing out. You have to send me some details. I'm now I'm kind of thinking about going to that now. I will for sure. And like, if like people like are interested in being part of like the pro life movement, but don't know like how to make a difference or like are scared to speak up about it, like how can they? So there's not one answer to this question. And what I normally say to this is DM me on Instagram. So my Instagram is at sav.speakslife. Because it really, it depends on where you are in the United States. First of all, it depends on what, what your strengths are, what exactly you want to do. You know, you can be involved in anything from marketing, communications, to finance, um, to fashion, to writing, anything like that. So it's really just about getting involved locally and then nationally. And if you DM me, I can help you find more information for where you are based. 
Mm -hmm, that's amazing and I want to thank you so much for coming on the podcast you're seriously amazing and like I'm still got me and you were able to figure out time and do this I know the last couple of weeks have been busy during the holidays and the new year and I just want to wish you the best for 2023 and let's plan something soon maybe we can we can have another podcast episode of course no this was so it was so great to meet you and it was, this was such a great way to start out in the new year. And yeah, I just encourage everyone 2023. I, I mean, 2022 was an amazing year in the pro-life mm-hmm. movement. I just put out a podcast today, kind of detailing what happened in 2022. And I'm so excited for this year to come. So mm-hmm. thank you so much for having me on. Of course. Thank you so much. And maybe I'll see you at the movement, like the whole thing. Hopefully in- I'll see you at the March for Life in DC. <laughs> Yeah, let's put, like, uh, send me some details and I'll try to make it there. I will, for sure. All right, thank you so much. Talk to you soon. Bye. Bye.